What is up, you guys? This is Treep from Treep Talks, and today what you are going to be listening to is the Jaguars 2019 positional outlook for the linebackers. Now, before you do that, why do you not go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video and leave a like down below. Now, you guys did a pretty good job with the likes last time. I got 29 likes, so this kitty was able to be okay. But now, if this does, if this video does not get 40 likes, tomorrow's video, something will happen to this kitty cat. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today we are continuing on with our positional outlooks for the 2019 season. Today, talking about the linebackers. Now, before I hop into this video, I would like to announce that this week's discussing video partner is going to be. J Xavier Sports. It's going to be a good time with him. He's making his YouTube comeback and he will be right here on the channel to discuss the linebackers. And I wish he was on the channel today because I have a lot of things I want to say and I feel like a back and forth conversation is really what I need. So you need to tune in to that discussing video that will drop on Thursday. Now we are going to be talking about the linebackers. We're going to talk about each linebacker, what they do well, what they don't do so well, and how all these linebackers kind of fit into the grand scheme of things for the Jaguars defense. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2019 Jacksonville Jaguars positional outlook for the linebackers. All right, let's first discuss the obvious elephant in the room, and it's a guy we have talked about quite a bit on the channel, and that guy's name is Jared Wilson. No, I'm kidding. It's Tobin Smith, but we do feel, I do feel like I talk about Jared Wilson a lot, and I just mentioned Jared Wilson again, so, you know, let's just see how many times, you know, my past couple of videos I mentioned Jared Wilson and Tobin Smith and AJ Can. you know, those are like the three guys I mentioned the most on this channel, but anyway, we're going on a random tangent here, let's go back to talking about Tobin Smith, so obviously Tobin Smith is not going to play this year from what we know now, you know, there might be something that happens during the season where he's like, I have a change of heart, I decided to play, I want to play football, or whatever, you know, he can make a move like that, we don't know just yet, but as of right now, he's not on the team, so we're not even going to be looking at him as a potential player this year. Now, him and Yannick Ngakwe and Jalen Ramsey, man, I feel like they are all in such similar situations, you know, Tillman Smith, I'm sure it actually is personal reasons, and you know, it's not necessarily anything to do with this front office, but maybe it is, but it seems like Jalen doesn't like the front office, and you know, Yannick Ngakwe is holding out, and you know, like, it, it wasn't very clear in my video that I dropped earlier talking about the Yannick Ngakwe thing, it wasn't very clear that, you know, it kind of sounded like I was mad that Yannick Ngakwe was holding out, I'm not mad Yannick Ngakwe is holding out, you know, I would hold out if I was in his situation too, like, don't get me wrong, like, this guy deserves to be deserves to be making more than seven hundred and thirty seven dollars. Like it's the seven hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars. Like I think that was his yearly salary this year. Like he deserves to be making more than that, and he deserves that extension. I don't see in any world where Yannick Ngakwe has not deserved his extension. You know I don't understand, and I don't understand too. It sucks, man, because this isn't a time that we should be talking about players you know, not being a part of the team or, you know, having these off the field issues. But we have players that have quite a bit of off the field issues. I mean, Yannick Ngakwe, it's not his fault. It's the front office's fault. So you got the front office causing off field issues and you got players causing, you know, off the field issues. Like there's so many things right now that just, it doesn't feel like this team's all the way glued together. You know, there's some guys on the team that seems like they're all in, like, and they're all team guys, but there are some guys out there that feel like they're not really invested in what the Jacksonville Jaguars have to offer, and that's tough. That's really, really tough to see because, you know, the talent is there. Like, the talent on this Jaguar team is there without a doubt. There's just so many conflicting personalities and, you know, not even the players' conflicting personalities. Because most of the players' personalities are the same. It's basically the players and who's in the front office's personalities that just don't get along. And it's a hard, hard scene to handle. And, you know, I just wish the Jaguars didn't have so many off-the-field issues. So I guess, you know, this first part of the video is me basically discussing the Yannick and Gawkway situation. Didn't mean to do that. 
but it is in the video nonetheless. Let's talk about the linebackers some more and get off of Tobin Smith because we're going to act like he does not exist. Now, one of the free agents that the Jaguars picked up this year is Jake Ryan. Now, Jake Ryan's coming off of an ACL tear, and he's a guy that never really played terrific football, but he does, you know, remind you of a guy like Paul Puzlesny. You know, a guy that was always mediocre for the team he played for, and maybe he just needs to find the right team and the right scheme to be successful. And I think in Jacksonville, he has that opportunity to be that guy. You know, depending on how many snaps he sees this year, I think he's going to be able to be a good addition to this defense. I don't think he's going to be like an above all difference maker per se this season. But I think he's a guy that a lot of people are forgetting about and not really talking about who we should be putting more investment towards. Because if you've seen him play in Green Bay, you know, in the snaps that he was in, he played well. He played good football. Like he's a guy that is going to help this Jaguar defense at the linebacker position because they need it really bad. You know, this is one of the strongest suits for the Jaguars, you know, you know, at one point in 2017 with Puzz, Miles, Telvin, dude. Like, that was the strength of this defense, and we lose Telvin, and it seems like it's just a gigantic loss. And I said I wasn't going to talk about Telvin Smith as much, but, you know, there's people out there that want to say that, you know, he had these problems you know he did not have a good year last year and I will say that he didn't make a lot of plays that he needed to make and you know I was one of the main people that was talking shit about him you watch any of my live reaction streams and if Telvin Smith makes a bad play I'm upset about it but this guy is still one of the best linebackers in the league we already paid this guy and you know it's so frustrating say it has to speak volumes about what this front what this front office is like it's I it doesn't seem like Telvin says this is connected but it just, it seems like it is. Like, it seems like he wants to get away from, like, a toxic environment. You know what I mean? So, God, it's hard to not talk about Telvin Smith. But a guy that I think is going to kind of take our minds off of Telvin Smith is going to be Miles Jack. And I'm going to address a question right here, right now, that I get in almost all of my videos. And do not think I don't see you, Mr. ZZ Visions. I see you, and I see your question and I decided to wait a little bit, answer it on camera, and tell you what I think. You know, I've kind of alluded to the fact that I don't think the Jaguars are going to pay Miles Jack. Now, if you were to ask me this exact question during, like, the early stages of the offseason, I'd say Miles Jack's not going to be here next year. You know, he's just not going to be here. But now, <laughs> with this Yannick Ngakwe situation, it's almost like they're trying to start valuing Miles Jack more. And it's not like he had, doesn't deserve it, man. Like... If you see this guy play, like, there's not a whole lot of guys that are as athletic as him at the middle linebacker position. Like, he's a good tackler. He has elite sideline-to-sideline -side speed. He's a turnover machine. He can run with your slot receiver, with your freaking tight end. He can do it all. Miles Jack is a do-it-all player, and he reminds you of Telvin Smith. Telvin Smith, I believe, has two more years of experience with the Jaguars, and, you know, we really fell in love with him because of how athletic he was, you know, sideline to sideline, he made turnovers, he made plays. Miles Jack is that same player, and I think he brings that same excitement in 2019, and he needs to because he needs to emerge as not only a leader on the field to earn that contract, but he needs to act up as a leader in the locker room. And, you know, he's already saying good things to the media. He talked about the Yannick Ngakwe. If he were to get extended, what would happen? He said that we'd all be excited. We'd be hugging, you know, because he's one of his best friends on the team. You know, like, that is good things to hear. And I can almost bet you anything Miles Jack is going to be a captain in 2019. So, what, to answer your question, you don't cut your captain. So, I think at the very minimum... Very minimum, I think we franchise tag him, but you know, at the same time, that's a little bit hard. That's a little hard because you know, you gotta pay. If you're not paying Yan, if you're not paying Yan, you might as well give Miles Jack some money. And to be honest, I don't think Miles Jack's gonna ask for that much money, and I don't think he's gonna be that big of an investment, to be honest. Like, I think the Jags. There is a world where the Jags can have all three because not to say Miles Jack doesn't necessarily deserve the bag. You know what I mean? He's a great player. He makes plays and he definitely has made those plays to show that he's earned a paycheck. But I just don't see us having to pay him a lot of money. I don't think he'd go anywhere else and make a ridiculous amount of money, like top tier middle linebacker money. I don't think he'd go anywhere and make that type of money. So I think that the Jags do have an opportunity to bring him back, and I would like to see him brought back, especially if he has a breakout um, special year this year, you know, where he has, you know, over 100 tackles. He makes the turnovers happen. He's a leader on the defense. Like, 
If he makes those types of plays and he does what he needs to do, Miles Jack's going to be one of the MVPs of the Jaguars, not only on the defensive side of the ball, but as a team as a whole. I really think, and I have a lot of um, excitement and a lot of good thoughts towards how t uh, Miles Jack is going to be doing in 2019. Now there's another guy we got to talk about, and it's a guy that's a little bit underrated, but a lot of guys are out here saying that he's going to be the next coming, and he's going to be a great addition to the team. We're talking about Quincy Williams. Is a very good player on paper, so it seems, but there's not a lot of things you can base that off of other than a highlight tape that he uh, put out himself. Now, I don't know what to expect from him. You know, from what I see, he licks, man. He hits hard. He's a hard-hitting linebacker, and, you know, from what I see, he looks like a good player, but, you know, you haven't necessarily seen the bad things he's done. You know, I don't know how much Murray State football you, you, sell, you yourself watch, but I don't watch a lot, so I have not seen Quincy Williams play. So you don't know what his bad plays are like. You know, there's no t that type of film to go off of. Like, you can't exactly tell what you're getting with Quincy Williams. But if the Jags took a chance on him, on a guy that wasn't on a lot of people's big boards... But, you know, scouts from other NFL teams were talking about how they really liked him and they wanted to snatch him up. And, you know, I think it was like Atlanta was going to take him in the third round if we weren't. Then that speaks volume of his character and speaks volume of volumes of how he is as a player. Like, he could be great and he could be a solid addition. But I don't think he's going to be on the field all that much. I think Miles Jack, uh, Jake Ryan, and, you know, Quincy probably in there getting a little bit of playing time, but not too much. You know, I see those two kind of being the bell cows of this uh, defense as far as that goes, uh, as far as our linebackers go. But we really don't know what we're getting with Quincy Williams. And I think that that guy is a true X factor to what this Jaguars defense is going to be. Because if he does get his opportunities, then he's going to go out there and play hard. And then you got a guy like Leon Jacobs, who Leon Jacobs is a guy we didn't even think would play when we drafted him. But, you know, he ended up making a couple of starts. Like, he was that guy in training camp, dude, that everybody was talking about. They're like, Leon Jacobs, man. Leon Jacobs, Leon Jacobs. He was out there. He was making plays. He was doing his thing. He also has a chance to be kind of that third linebacker to come in. But, you know, those two are kind of the same players. We didn't know a whole lot about Leon Jacobs. We knew that he was stacked. He was a big dude. And we drafted a very strong linebacker. But we didn't know really what he brought to the table. It's the same thing with Quincy Williams. You know, I'm going to kind of have to wait and see with Quincy Williams before I give you a legitimate opinion on what I think he will be as a player. Now, as Leon Jacobs is concerned, I think he's not that, I don't think he's that good. I think that he, he didn't really make plays out there, and more often than not, you've seen him kind of getting, you know, ran over, missed tackles. Like, there, there wasn't a whole lot to appreciate about Leon Jacobs game last year at least in my opinion and him and Quincy Williams I think are kind of the the wild card linebackers that you know probably won't see a lot of playing time maybe on special teams but you know you got Jake Ryan Miles Jack who I think are going to be the guys that make a total difference next year and they are going to be the guys that are going to have to lead this defense because the linebackers are the leader of any defense and you know we need to see how these guys are going to do because it really does start with your linebackers you know those are the quarterbacks of your defense so we really need to see how good these linebackers are going to be. And I'm very, very excited to see how they develop. And hopefully Miles Jack just emerges as a true, true talent because he deserves to be recognized for how good of a player he really is. And that was my Jaguars 2019 positional outlook for the linebackers. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.